Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where today we are embarking on another soy-free tofu adventure, making this creamy and dreamy pink tofu. But this red lentil tofu is not like other red lentil tofus that you might have seen here on YouTube. I mean, you've read the title, so let's get straight into it by soaking them. But ew. There is nothing wrong with these lentils. Those are not bugs, even though it looks like it. So I don't think you really need to rinse these a bunch. However, the very sight gives me the heebie-jeebies, so I absolutely must rinse them until the water runs clear. We'll add more water and let them soak for about 10 to 15 minutes. If you're using whole lentils, I suppose you're gonna have to soak them a little longer. Then drain completely afterwards. And add half to your blender. Obviously, adjust the amount to the size of your blender, whatever it can handle. By the way, the total weight of the soaked lentils was just under two pounds, and I'm adding about three cups of water. Then blend. This time, I blended about 15 seconds. And it looks quite liquefied, right? It smells nice and fresh too. Much better than the smell of raw soy milk and even better than the fava bean milk from last week. However, I gotta say, straining lentil milk is even more annoying than straining soy or fava bean milk. Or maybe because all the testing I've been doing recently, I am just tired of straining milk. So all I'm saying is the first company that comes out with a legume milk making machine that can do this job with larger quantities of beans or lentils is getting my money. Like there are machines that claim to make soy milk, but they are never good enough to handle the amount of beans, or in this case lentils, that we need in order to make a reasonably sized block of tofu. It just doesn't exist yet. Anyways, rant over. Gosh, even the pulp is pretty. What will I do with it? Uh, in this case, reprocess it because look at these lentil chunks. This means I didn't blend enough and I'm gonna have to go through the annoying process again. The pulp needs to be much finer than this. You want it to resemble dry, crumbly Play-Doh. So back into the blender with some more water. And again, into the milk bag, squeeze it, get a major hand and arm workout, curse the day you were born, and make this absolutely beautiful pink lentil milk full of protein. The pulp is much paler now, but more importantly, the right texture. Finer particles, Play-Doh-like, smooth but dry so it crumbles. I might dry this and make lentil fiber flour and use it in low-carb baking. Maybe. Let me know if you're into that sort of thing. So uh, with the other half of the lentils, I just used more water and blended for 30 seconds to get the ideal result. Of course, depending on your blender, your mileage may vary. Lentils have way more starch than soybeans, so we're gonna have to let this settle for at least 15 minutes. So after about 15 minutes, you can see the layer of starch through the glass bowl. You can also assume the starch has settled in this pot as well. I'm gonna pour the milk off the top into this extra large mason jar and see how much starch comes loose from the bottom and goes into this jar. Check out that starch layer. This, my friends, is a twofer if you have kids. You've made protein-rich lentil milk and this oobleck is super entertaining, even if you're not a kid. And just like with our fava bean milk from last week, I'll gently scoop this milk into my cooking pot whilst trying not to disturb the bottom layer of starch. I'll switch to a shallow spoon at the end, leaving the last trace of milk behind because it's just not possible to get it all without contaminating the protein milk with the starch. And because filming what you're doing and trying to get angles and stuff takes a while, this jar has been sitting for at least 15 minutes now. And uh, as you can see, there's hardly any starch. So maybe pouring off the top might work in the future. This was not the case with the fava bean milk. Now we can cook this pretty pink milk. Start it on medium heat. And now is a good time to get your tofu making equipment ready which includes the tofu press I told you about last time, a cup of room temperature water, and a fine cloth to line the mold. This one actually comes with the tofu press in a set, so check out my affiliate link in the description if you wanna check it out. 
highly recommend, especially as we are continuing on our tofu journeys together. However, you don't really have to buy special things. Back in the day, I just tied up a bunch of layers of cheesecloth, put it in a steamer basket, and stuck a weight on top to make my tofu. No mold necessary. Was it wonky shaped and not super profesh looking? Yes. But did it taste any different? No. Anyways, also get your coagulant into that water. I like to use food grade gypsum, aka calcium sulfate, though a few people mentioned last week that they'd like to use nagari, which is magnesium chloride, or even Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. And those should be fine too, just make sure it is food grade. Personally, I grew up eating Chinese style tofu, which is more commonly using calcium sulfate. I think it tastes more neutral. Nigari is used in Japanese tofus more, though not always always, and I find it tastes a little bit bitter. However, some people really like that flavor more. My original at home tofu recipe used lemon juice because back in those days, it was harder to get gypsum or other coagulants online, but nowadays it is so easy. So of course, I'm gonna leave links in the description for you. However, in this recipe, I only tested with calcium sulfate, so use the others at your own risk. One tablespoon of calcium sulfate for one cup of room temperature water, though I only ended up using half. So you can save the other half for your next batch, or in case the milk does not fully coagulate the first time, you can do another round of coagulation. Back to our pink lentil milk. When it has your full attention, you can turn the heat up to medium high or high and constantly stir so you avoid burning anything to the bottom. And with your inexpensive and extremely convenient laser thermometer, check it every so often. I want the temperature to be 180 degrees Fahrenheit, one, to cook the milk because humans do not have a great time digesting raw lentil anything, and secondly, because the heat is necessary for coagulation. When it gets there, why not have a taste? I think this would make a lovely protein-rich broth for a creamy soup. It has a very mild but savory flavor. I'm a little sad that the pink has mellowed out into a peachy pale color, but it's to be expected, right? Still pretty. Turn the heat off, stir the coagulant with one hand, stir the milk with the other, then slowly pour in half the coagulant. Leave it sitting there in the residual heat for 15 minutes to let the coagulant coagulate the lentil milk. While you wait, you can line your mold with the cloth, which of course you know to dampen first, right? It just makes things easier. When we come back, reveal the peachy pale pink curds and clear whey. You can gently press on the curds to make sure all the milk has separated but you can see the curds are much finer, much less solid than with the soy curds or fava bean curds. When I first saw this, I was scared that they would be like almond milk curds, just completely unusable for making traditional tofu. However, with a little patience, a few different types of strainers, a few muttered curse words, and um, well, okay, a heck of a lot of patience. You're gonna need a heck of a lot of patience to fill up this tofu mold with these soft, fine curds. And there are still some super fine clouds of curds in the way, but I'm just going to use those leftovers for soup. Fold the cloth over and this will keep all the curds in and help to keep the shape of the tofu. Place the top plate on there and now holding it securely, you can pour off the excess liquid. And then add the pressing lid, which has a spring to keep pressure on the tofu so more liquid can be drained out and the tofu has become solid, solid-ish. Uh, you'll see what I mean later. I'll also twist the top, which adds even more pressure. Drain away any water through the built-in vents, and this will go into the fridge to chill completely. I always just leave that in overnight. The next day, ever so gently, ever so carefully, pull the wrapped tofu out of there. This tofu is more delicate than traditional soy or our new fava bean tofu. This brick is creamy. It will crumble at the touch around the edges, so treat it with care. And the taste? Well, it's very red lentil tasting. It's a little grassy, but mild. It's cuttable, but you have to take care and pick it up the same way. 
Is it bouncy like fava bean tofu? No, but it would make a great tofu dip or spread. However, let me show you what it's like air fried. First, plain, with a little salt because that's just fair, and simply in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. While they're in there, let's make an awesome simple seasoning that you can use for all your tofu frying needs. It's nutritional yeast and my favorite ground to a dust onion powder plus garlic powder. And more nutritional yeast because we're just eyeballing here. Plus salt. Never forget the salt because you can have all the seasonings in the world but without salt to wake up the flavors, it might still taste bland. Mix it up and in goes a cube of pink tofu. Because it's so delicate, I'm using a spoon to help coat all the sides. Let's do a few more. Now we have four lovely cubes of coated pink tofu. And our plain air fried cubes are ready. They are nice and golden and puffy. You'll be tempted to squish that puffiness. And the steam might burn you, so be careful. They taste pretty good. Plain because there's no seasoning except for a little sprinkle of salt. The outside is not crispy, despite the look, because the steam from the inside, you know, but it's kind of chewy like normal tofu puffs. Not bad, but we can do better. It's time to air fry our actually well-seasoned pink tofu. I'll spray half with a bit of oil so you can see the difference. And into the air fryer, same temperature, same amount of time. They come out looking even more golden and crispy around the edges. And this time they do stay crispy around the edges. You can see a slight difference between the ones that were sprayed with oil. They look a little more attractive, but taste-wise, they are almost identical. Very delicious with enough flavor to carry through to the creamy center. The contrast is absolutely wonderful. I highly recommend it. Very delicious. But the king of texture, my friends, comes from deep frying. Coated in the same, into oil heated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and cooked for about a minute or two, until they look golden and beautiful like this. They are sizzling, crispy gems of tofu. And that crunch, the contrast. Y'all know I'm not trying to deep fry all the time because of reasons, but it is so good. And that's pink tofu. Would you eat it? Would you make it? I know it is super annoying to make, but still, sometimes you just have to make things from scratch because you gotta know how it tastes. So satisfy your culinary curiosity. Let me know what else you're curious about in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and please share especially with anyone who wants in on tofu or plant-based protein but they cannot maybe do the regular soy kind or just wants some variety. Please give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already for more soy-free thrilling tofu trials. Also, thank you to my champions, my channel members, who help all the behind the scenes testing with your monthly support. You are the best. If you haven't checked out my other tofu making tutorials, make sure to check those out popping up on the screen now or in the description. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.